This is the first talk I've ever given, so uh, I'm already shitting myself. The original title was Help, 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 Ah, but I changed it to Apple. So hello, who am I? I'm having photos taken me this off button. It doesn't matter who I am. There's a few laughs. Oh, a round of applause, yes. I didn't expect any laughs at all to get a round of applause. It's basically made my life worth living. That's a wrestling in-joke. I'm a wrestling fan. I'm also a former games journalist of about 12 years. Uh, that was a complete waste of time, so I got out of it and went into PR, as most games journalists do, because you can earn money and afford things like you know, crisp sandwiches. <laughs> Madness, I know. I'm also a massive wrestling fan because I'm a nerd, and that's just the kind of thing you have to do. Uh, I've been playing wrestling games basically forever, and one thing I do like to do in wrestling games is make myself, as you can see there. <laughs> Fucking seamless. <laughs> anyway, I've just messed up on my notes here. Bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> so, what is wrestling? Oh, it's supposed to pop up one at a time there. Ah, oh, well, what can you do? Uh, wrestling is brilliant. Wrestling is important. You probably would have laughed more if they'd have come up one at a time. Wrestling is the greatest damn soap opera on television today, and I will fight anyone who says otherwise, because that's what they do in wrestling. <laughs> anytime anybody has a disagreement, anytime anybody, you know, steals their love, or, uh, well, whatever else it is they do on soap operas, I don't watch them, they solve it by fighting, which makes it amazing. Uh, it's predetermined, not fake, which is an important, dis important distinction to make. Uh, fake is when you pretend to do things, predetermined is when you just know the outcome. It's not fake when they hit each other with chairs and fall off ladders and so on. It's predetermined that that will happen. They do still get hurt doing this, but they know it's going to happen. They know how to tuck and roll, whatever else. Uh, it's much closer to a dance than a fight, which obviously feeds into the predetermined element of it that two people get together or more people get together beforehand and um, discuss with one another what they're going to do and put on a performance for everybody. It is a performance involving many. Um, <laughs> that last line there, see? At least he got a laugh. It is a racist, sexist, homophobic carnival sideshow, and it has a lot to overcome in that respect. It is getting better, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today, so sorry about that. I'm not actually going for the deep stuff that you all like. <laughs> Wrestlers I like. Again, these are supposed to be revealed one at a time, so let's just ignore these two. This is Mantor. <laughs> Do you get it? Because it's like a Minotaur. Mantor. Yeah. This is Duke the Dumpster Drossy. He's an evil bin man. And this one, this guy here, everybody see that? Any guesses who that is? This was at Backlash 2006. Two people know who that is. So Vince McMahon, the real life owner of the WWE, teamed up with his real life son, Shane McMahon, to face uh, Shawn Michaels, wrestling legend, and Shawn Michaels' tag team partner, God. <laughs> God came out as a spotlight on the ring. See his little video there, which is just clouds. Yep. Uh, came down to the ring, was, you know, generally invisible throughout, and what happened at the end of the match was Vince McMahon pinned Shawn Michaels for the victory, which means in wrestling history, Vince McMahon holds a win over God. <laughs> the man has an ego. I'm also a smark, that means a smart mark. Uh, a smart mark is someone who knows and understands the business. They know it's not just about the wins and the losses, kind of the results of everything. They appreciate the meta game that's at play. It's not a case of, oh, he won by cheating, that's nonsense. I, I'm so angry that he cheated, like my girlfriend does. Uh, <laughs> it's because, <laughs> didn't need that dig. Um, it's more about them being booked well and written well and, um, so, for example, somebody cheats because it's in their character to cheat. Uh, somebody cheats, be uh, it's not just about cheating, but somebody cheats because they are a dickhead and they would cheat. It makes sense for them to do that, and you appreciate this kind of stuff in it. Another one of those lines that would have popped up and been funny. Uh, they're super cool and sexy and a hit of parties. Please invite me to parties. <laughs> Don't, because I won't come. One of the most important aspects of wrestling is it is kayfabe, which means fake. I know I said before it's not fake, but let's just ignore that. Um, kayfabe is pig Latin meaning fake, and it's kind of the bubble that surrounds all of wrestling. Uh, it protects the business, uh, or it used to protect the business now. Everybody obviously knows it is predetermined. Um, and everybody and everything within the wrestling business is protected.
detected by this bubble of kayfabe. Uh, it's not just about you know pretending to punch somebody or whatever. It's about who wins and why they win and uh, who's been kicked off the bu- uh, kicked out of the business for a little bit, who's had an injury that gets them off TV for just enough time for them to make a heroic comeback a few weeks later and beat up the bad guy. It's usually John Cena who does that. I don't like John Cena. And kayfabe is something that goes through all of wrestling, always has gone through all of it. It used to be a lot more about... Um, Back in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, that, that was the point when you would have wrestling fans who were so irate and so pissed off at the bad guys that they would literally stab them and shoot them at shows. You can find many, many stories about this kind of thing. Wrestlers genuinely fearing for their lives because they'd been such a dickhead in the ring and people thought it was real. Nowadays, it's more about just kind of protecting the business and uh, things along those lines. So what is wrestling in games? Wrestling in games is not kayfabe. Uh, it kind of never presents itself as this uh, this well, this insider term, really. It always presents itself as very real. It presents, him, present, uh, presents itself as the same as, uh, uh, well, a sports game, and it plays out the same way as a Tekken or a Street Fighter or anything like that. It's very competitive. It's very directly two or more people standing in a ring, punching and kicking each other until one of them's nearly dead. Um, as a result, it's made for marks, not smarks. Marks another insider term, meaning the people who kind of like wrestling and, generally speaking, actually believe it to be real. They are my favourite people. Um, though there are, you know, there's, 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 there's normal people like me, hello, who are marks sometimes, because sometimes it's nice just to have suspension of disbelief and accept that things are bloody cool. And when I'm sat there in my room at two in the morning watching Sami Zayn win the NXT championship a year or two back, and I actually cheered on my own in my pajamas. (laughs) Wrestling in games is not a storyteller. I feel like I skipped ahead of this point in the last thing. Wrestling itself is about telling a story. It's about not necessarily what happens before the match and after the match, obviously that feeds into it, but a lot of the main stories of it are told within the ring between the two bells. And um, some of the greatest stories that have been told in wrestling have completely, well, maybe one or two things before the match have mattered, but when it's come to the match itself, that's just, it's just an entire narrative contained within it. And the narrative also involves people hitting each other, which is hilarious. Um, Whereas wrestling in games doesn't really bother with the storytelling that much because it is Tekken, it's Street Fighter, it's a sports game. You have your cutscenes before, you have your cutscenes afterwards, but none of it really matters. It's just battering the buttons and battering the other person. That's because it's competition and it's not presented as a performance. And wrestling is, as I said before, it's more like a dance, it's more like a performance, it's choreographed, it's people putting on a show for an audience to to enjoy. Once again, a (laughs) pop-up. So how wrestling games have kind of tried to tackle this recently, and when I'm talking about wrestling games, I'm mainly talking about the WWE games, which is the only real federation that worth giving a shit about, and the only one that releases the big, massive um, uh, sports games every year, and they are sports games. So the most recent edition, WWE 2K17, which is a mouthful, had this f- feature, which I've forgotten what it is, so we'll ignore that. And a star rating system, which uh, goes back to a lot of wrestling reviews. There's a guy, Dave Meltzer, who reviews pretty much every wrestling match ever and gives it a star rating out of five. So they introduced this aspect to it, rating every match out of five. Now, in the real world, wrestling, as I say, it's a performance. It's it's, it's a choreographed thing for the uh, entertainment and amusement of millions around the world. So it's about the people who are actually competing. There'd be that two, three, five, 30 of them. It involves the referee, it involves the commentators, it involves the crowd, it involves people in the back, it involves so many people just to put on the show to make everybody happy and everybody go away going, yeah, I enjoyed seeing him hit him with some steel chairs. Whereas in the game, it presents this system as all about you. It does a very video gamey thing. It makes it kind of that power trip thing that most video games do. It's all about the moves that you do. It's all about the last second kickouts that you do. It's all about the, the you know your move variety, height and drama. We all have that in our lives. Um, about the memorable moments when you go for the high spots and things like that. And it doesn't factor in the other competitor, whether that's AI or another player. And as a result, it's just fundamentally broken. It doesn't work. It doesn't present wrestling how wrestling is. Wrestling is collaborative, and this is 
combative. It's just entirely kind of, I don't want to say lazy because it seems, feels like a lazy word to use, but it's kind of lazy video games being lazy. Hey, let's just turn it into a fight instead of putting some thinking into it. But then I wouldn't have been able to do this talk. <laughs> so what's a wrestling... What should wrestling in games be? I have no idea, but games should be able to handle it. Imagine if that had popped up. You'd have blown your minds. I'm breaking everything. Sorry, Jake. Uh, it should be kayfabe. Um, I think it's pretty clear that we all kind of understand that wrestling... Is, do we? Wrestling is not 100% real. Yeah. I know it's still real to you, damn it, but... It does have an undead wizard. <laughs> undead zombie wizard. He's been around for ages. Um, so it should be kayfabe. It, should, it, it doesn't have to go out there and say, hey, this isn't real, but it just needs to acknowledge the fact that we all kind of were in on it. We understand. We get it. And from there, you can build something that's just a bit more. You can make something that is made for smarks, smart asses like me and marks who just love it unironically. You make it cooperative and collaborative and a storytelling device, a performance. So you make it something where it's not just going out there to punch each other into submission or pinfall, as it may be. You go out there to put on a show. You go out there to uh, give people something to watch. And it's it kind of goes against how all, well, sports games, I suppose, are designed. But then it's not a sport, is it? So it shouldn't really be designed like a sports game. One sec. See, all this and I forget I've got notes. I, I, I totally understand why we're kind of stuck in this competitive rut, but at the same time, it could be opened up into something far more interesting and far more, um, well, far more like wrestling. Uh, there are a few different games that have tried different things over the years, and uh, they're all interesting in, in their own ways, and they all work in different ways, but none of them have really nailed it. There's uh, Total Extreme Wrestling and the other ones. Extreme Warfare Revenge, very friendly names. And they're kind of, they're independently made uh, by Grey Dog Studios, I think it is. Uh, management simulators, and there's another one that's a career simulator that's on my notes, Ref Wrestling Revolution 3D. And they, they understand the kayfabe aspect of it. They understand that you can let people in behind the scenes and give them... Um, more to, more to play about with, more to talk about, I suppose. Uh, for example, Wrestling Revolution 3D includes things like um, contractual stipulations and drug abuse, because they are things that are big in wrestling, even if they don't acknowledge it on TV very much. But they're also very, I mean, look at how wordy that is, and it's a, it's a simulation game rather than kind of an action game. Uh, I don't know. Uh, WWF Smackdown 2, which released back in the year 2000 when games looked like that. Um, that looked good back in the day. It still looks, it's still good to me. Um, that had a story mode, career mode in it, which I played through with three of my friends. You'd have four player career in it. And it was a series of just randomized storylines that kind of stick together and give you feuds with people. And it was really good fun to play, but what made it even more fun was the four of us all sat in the room playing it, making our own stories up around what, we, what the game was presenting us. And the game kept on putting me into a feud with this guy called Viscera. And he annoyed the shit out of me because I didn't like him in real life and he kept on, well, he kept on beating me up behind the scenes in the game and that's quite annoying. And so after a while we decided, we came up with a story around it that our next match was going to be the last match and it was this whole stupid thing we came up with, buried alive, blah -de blah They do have buried alive matches in real life, by the way. Uh, nobody dies. Um, it's not real. Um, and yeah, yeah, I won the match, and, we, and uh, one of the systems of the game was you could take wrestlers out of the career mode, so they just weren't in it anymore. So we took him out after that, so our storyline said he was no longer in it. And then I just yeah, went to make a cup of tea or to the loo or something, and when I came back, my friends had put him back in. <laughs> I didn't know this. And then the game, as such things I want to do, uh, put me in a feud with Viscera again. <laughs> I was fucking fuming. So that was something that it did that was kind of us outside the game rather than the game itself. I mean, the systems were there, but we took full advantage of everything. Um, WWF No Mercy on the N64 is still the greatest wrestling game ever made. It's uh, still sports-like, com uh, competitive, blah -de blah It's just really deep and technical and nice. But its story mode was particularly interesting because it accepted the fact that it isn't just a kind of elimination tournament to success. It 
presented things as a branching storyline. You start a game, you have a match, whether you win or lose, you progress. And that's the point of it. That's the point of wrestling. It's a career path. It's not just an A to B. And as a result, that's something that's kind of stuck with me over the years. Um, wasn't incredible. I mean, he could still reach some dead ends and stuff, and it was quite limited in how many paths there were, but it was just a nice thing being able to lose and still continue. That's something that more games should do. My favorite one, uh, Fire Pro Wrestling Advance on the Game Boy Advance, strangely only on this version of it on the Game Boy Advance, um, had a mode called Audience Mode, for which I'm going to consult my notes. Um, yes, it was called Audience Mode. So the the thing about this was it was you know same as any other wrestling game, standard kind of thing, competitive, battering each other, whatever. But this audience mode specifically put you in front of different audiences who expected different things from the matches. So it was tapping more into the performance aspect of things. So for example, you had a, a kind of very standard crowd who just wanted to go out there, beat each other up and win quickly. And then you have the uh, lucha crowd who go for the kind of more Mexican wrestling style and, and things like that where you had to keep moving constantly. You had to do flippy high spots and things and backflips and wear masks and whatever else like that. The hardcore crowd who want to see blood and violence and things that I can no longer stomach, even though I could when I was younger. And yeah, it's, it just presents it in a much better way for my brain, I suppose. Um, yeah, sorry, that was it. It was, uh, it was another mode, like similar to No Mercy, where winning or losing didn't matter. In this, winning or losing didn't matter. It was the rating that you got from the audience that mattered. It was how well you actually performed that mattered. So you could go through a match, lose at the end of it, still get 100% rating, still progress in your little league system that you have in it, because you put on the match that the crowd wants to see, which is much closer to how wrestling actually is, actually should be, even if it was still punching each other in the face. So what should wrestling and games be? I have no idea, but games should be able to handle it, because they can do anything. I wish that wasn't there. Uh, they should be kayfabe. They should acknowledge the... Uh, See, what I've done here is forgotten that I've already gone through that because I'm shitting myself still. That pops up, and it's supposed to be a little bit lower so you can actually see what it says. So what game, what wrestling game should be is Dance Dance Revolution crossed with interactive fiction. <laughs> That's what they should be. Um, kind of think just DDR, Telltale making it. <laughs> Put him in it with his weird calves and his little trainer socks. And yeah, this idea partly came from uh, Oliver Lee Bateman on Vice, who was writing about, the, well, pretty much the same thing that I'm talking about. Uh, he did it a lot better, though, because he didn't have to stand here. Uh, he said, in an ideal world, which isn't the one we live in, wrestling games would fuse the NBA 2K management model with some sort of Dance Dance Revolution type choreographic challenge. Backstage politics, online rumors, character development, and other role-playing elements would all inform the player's experience. The game would center on the single most compelling aspect of the sport, somehow managing to become the best, even as one's ultimate fate rests in the hands of unpredictable co-workers and indifferent bottom-line-oriented executives. That sounds like a really interesting game to me. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy going into a ring and hitting people, and in the game, haha. <laughs> but that just sounds a lot better. So, you know, I'll leave it with the people who actually designed games.